test, test. Just testing to see if the microphone's working. It looks like it is.
All right, guys, we will uh, get the varsity game started here in just about a minute. We'll start off with probably the national anthem. I'm here with Miss Mitchell and her son, Kipton. Hi. <laughs> that was Kipton there. Um, let you listen to the PA announcer. you guys couldn't hear that announcement that was a sixth grade student here at Grayville and that was very brave of that them to very, sing that. It was very impressive. It was. All right first we'll have the Hawks of Gowton County. Number 33 Lucas Jackson senior. Number 24 Noah Richardson he's a senior this year. Another guard, number two, Wyatt Fromm. He's a senior as well. Number 23, a guard, junior, Grant Jackson. And another guard, number one, Maddox Sandifer. Another senior. Here's the cheerleaders, if you can see them. I think they look fantastic. Oh, they did an excellent job tonight. Now we're going to meet the uh, starters for the home team tonight, the Grayville Bison. Number 15, a junior, Canyon Neely. Number 15, Canyon Neely, just a junior. Another junior, number three, Zach Levins. Senior guard number 30, Kanan Worley. Number 24, sophomore, 24, Jake Hosman. Then number five, Tyze Rowland.
make our uh, microphone situation work, but I think Matt's just going to have to hold it. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> um, Hawks are excited for this. Uh, coming off of a year last year where they won the regional championship, uh, lost a heartbreaker in the sectional semifinal to Weber. Um, should be an exciting year. Brought back everybody except for uh, probably one or two starters in Karen Fillingham and uh, Riley Rush or Riley, uh, yeah, Riley Rushing. Looks like the Hawks got the tip. Grant's going to look to penetrate. Throws it out of bounds. Going to be Grayville basketball. Number 15, Canyon Neely, is going to handle the ball over to three, back to 30. Number 15, Canyon Neely inside to Tyze. If I remember correctly, I think I, when I talked to Coach Edderback, a lot of stuff's going to run through five. Uh, Tyze, uh, he was a, I think he's been about a three year starter the last few years. Real good basketball player from what Coach Edderback and Coach McGuire have told me. Got a traveling violation on Grayville. Going to be Gowton County basketball. 7.37 left in the first quarter, no score. <laughs> Noah with the basketball out to Wyatt. Grant's got it, over back over to Noah. Noah's looking to attack. Good move by Maddox, up, and no good on that first one, on that first one but a foul call. And I will say that Maddox actually uh, had a doctor's appointment this morning for a hurt hip that he had in practice this last weekend, so just seeing him out there is exciting. And he told me today he pushed through the pain to make sure he could play his senior year. First one's up and good for Maddox. And Gowton County is on the board first. Second one's up and good. Also, just to give you an idea of the atmosphere here, it is jam-packed. I'm sure you can see the other side, but it's it's hard to hear in this gym. And so I can barely hear Matt sitting right beside me. Yep. And Kipton agrees. <laughs> As you can kind of see, uh, Grayville's trying to run everything through number five, Tyze. Also, like uh, we talked about in the girls' game last week, the the fouls have all changed. The foul situation has changed. So right now we're already at two fouls for the quarter. And once we get to five, we're shooting two free throws. Grayville's tied it up and over to Noah. That's what Noah's got to do. Got to go up strong there. There you go. Only two fouls on Grayville as well. For those of you that don't know at home, um, the rule has changed this year. There's no more one in bonus. Once you get to five fouls in a quarter, it will be two free throws. Um, and the fouls, team fouls will reset each quarter. First one, no good for Noah. Two to two early going, six minutes and 28 seconds. Noah for his second free throw. You can definitely tell there's some first game jitters. First game jitters uh, with the Hawks and, and probably for Grayville too. You know, I'm sure just first game of the season, everybody's excited and pumped up. And, I just got a text from uh, Sarah Rushing. She was the three-point shot from the corner for Grant Jackson. 6-2 early on here for the Hawks. Up and good for number 30, Kanan Worley. He's a senior for the Grayville Bison. Poked out of bounds there by Grayville. Now, anyways, what I was saying was Miss uh, Sarah Rushing texted me and she said, this is pretty nice. This is the first time in a long time that she gets to sit at home and, and watch a game from her recliner in her pajamas. <laughs> so, shout out to you, Miss Rushing. Yeah, 
enjoy your chair at home while we're sitting here in the uh, small Grayville gym. Bring in the action right to your couch. Three point shot up, no good. Rebound by Maddox. Maddox looking to push a little bit here, get the offense set up. Looks like maybe a little isolation play here for Grant Jackson. Had the hot hand, he knocked down the three. Driving middle, up and fouled. Shooting two free throws on the shooting foul there. Fouls on number 30. That's team foul number three, only three, less than three minutes in. Grant shooting free throws. 5-16 here to play. First one's up, no good. Second one's up and good for Grant Jackson. Seven to four here for the Hawks. Tajay crosses the timeline. Wyatt guarding him. Probably one of the best defenders in the, probably in the conference in uh, Wyatt Fromm. Does an excellent job. Uh, you got anybody's got a score, most of the time Coach Utterback will put Wyatt on them. Um, and most of the time Wyatt does his job and locks down whoever that score is. Yeah, he's kind of one of those kids too that might not get all the recognition that he deserves because he's not the top scorer. But um, I've talked to them many times too just about how much he impacts the game with his defense. Well, that's one of the big things that Coach Utterback and Coach McGuire talked about last year was they would have liked to have had the opportunity to play against Meridian in the sectional championship and see what Wyatt could have done against the kid that right. scored about 1,000 points yes. in a year. Grayville's going to look to push here. Ajay up and in. Six to seven here with 3.55 to go. Again, I'm like you, Miss Mitchell. I think there's some uh, first game jitters on both sides. Yes, and I, I was, not that I should bring up the past, but I did kind of try to get the boys fired up and reminded them that, you know, two years ago, um, we lost to Grayville here. And then last year was a very close game in the first, first game that we played them in our play. So, um, it's not just one of those games that you can come in here and expect to win by 30 points. It's the first game, and um, we're all working through some things. So I hope that they can remember that throughout this one. Coming in for Grayville, number 22, uh, Ian Kleinschmidt. He looks like a, he's a freshman. Hawks are going to take it out of bounds over to Matt Maddox, up to Wyatt. Early on here, both teams just kind of feeling each other out, seeing what each one's got. Maddox for three, got to follow your shot though. And I heard Coach McGuire on that, follow your shot. with the early lead. If you're going to foul a shooter, make sure they don't make it. Grant's going to run the nice little hesitation move there to the basket. Grant scores 9-9 nine, nine early on for Coach Utter back in the gang. Game's all tied up here. <laughs> Kipton update, the game is all tied. And we, we got a call, uh, we're the back call there, so. 
Well, Jerry, actually, they don't call it over the back no more. It, when they go over the back like that, it's a pushing foul. They no longer have it over the back fouls. Thank you for that information, Matt. I did not know that. You'll hear a lot of people scream over the back. It's a push. That's all they call it. It's still over the back to me. Oh, I agree with you. Captain wants me to let everybody know that this is his first time on the broadcast. So. And here's the thing. Here's a okay. Two minutes, 25 seconds left. That is Grayville's fifth foul. Uh, so from here on out, for every foul Grayville commits, it will be two free throws for Gowton County. It's kind of a weird foul. You've been playing with it for a while now, so what are your thoughts? What do you think that – I mean, you know, it, you've got to be clean on defense, but it would, it'll would it definitely it'll definitely change strategy late in the game. I haven't – thankfully I have not ran into it late in the game where I've had to foul or – That'll be interesting, though. I'm sure there'll be a game coming. Grant knocks both of them down. That's a good sign for the Hawks early on, knocking free throws down. That's going to be important. When you're beating everybody by 20 and 30 points, Matt, you don't have to worry about it too much, do you? Well, I do agree with that. Um, the uh, Same way with the junior high girls right now. The junior high girls, they're, they're undefeated. Uh, right there, Wyatt should have picked that off. Um, he's got to go for that steal there. A little out of control there by uh, Colin Monroe. He's checked into the game. Up and good for Grayville. 11-11, 150 to go. Falls out of bounds there. It'll be Bison basketball. Steal by uh, Noah up to Wyatt, looking to push up for the layup. Up and good. 120 to play. Hawks lead 13-11. Good job by Noah Richardson there. Got another. Oh, just had another one. I don't know that I agree with that one, Jarrah. I think that was out on. Uh, I think that was out on Grayville. Well, they changed it. Did they change it? It's Gowton County. I was about to say it should have been Gowton County ball. Yes, I think Mr. Ryderback was going to run and make sure give the ball to the Hawks himself. Up no good there. One minute to play here in the first quarter. 13-11 Hawks early on. Take away by Noah. Out running. Up and good by Noah. 15-11. You think Noah was thinking about trying to dunk it there? I was a little nervous that he was going to. Another steal. This time by Maddox. Off to Wyatt. Wyatt looking to push. Up to Grant. Looks like they're going to maybe hold for one shot here. Grant driving. Oh, up and no good. I don't know that I completely agree with that foul. That's Noah's. That's Noah's second personal foul early on here. I'm glad they're announcing that because for some reason it's not on the board, so we'll try to keep everybody updated as we can. But, yes, uh, two fouls on Noah in the first quarter is not what we wanted. It looks like Dylan Rushing's getting ready to check in here to the game. 11 and a half seconds to go. First up and good for Grayville. At the line for Grayville, number five, Ty J or Ty Zay Rowland. Second one's up and good. 11 seconds to go. The foul's gonna be on number 15 for uh, Grayville. Going on the line for the Hawks. Uh, number two, Wyatt Fromm. Entering the game to the 
Second one's up and good. 16-13 here with about three seconds to go. Oh, good by interception. All right, first quarter score. Hawks 16, Grayville 13. And now um, we will watch our wonderful Hawks cheerleaders. job by our top cheerleaders tonight and um, our uh, captain's going to read our sponsors of the Hawks Network so if you get any wrong if I get any wrong um, I'm sorry Irvin Cable Construction Company, Legions Bank, Jeremy and Amy, not along with Steve and Candy Drone, Mike Gross and Saws, Sons Heating and Air, Car Carlin's Auto Body, Ventera Bank, John and Kathy Seedley, New Hope Church, Elsland Concrete Construction LLC. Great job, Kipton, and we really thank our sponsors because without you guys, Sarah Rushing would not be sitting in her chair watching tonight. <laughs> also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Miss Mary Reader. She was uh, kind of our sound person. She was texting me early on and uh, making sure that our sound was working, texting me and letting me know. Going to the line for Grayville, number three. Uh, Zach Lavens. I want to give a shout out to our cheerleaders and uh, their new coach, uh, Miss Aaron Hum and Mr. Cody Turner. The 2023 cheerleaders are Adriana Pierce, Lacey Hughes, Lexi Hughes, Zoe Robbins, Olivia Moore, Ava Wood, Allie Ratley, Jaden Cra Jaden Cracky, Taylor Bo Bosaw. Kirsten Holt, Campbell Cruzen, Callie Jester, Jessica Doggett, and Ava Wright. Just like that, it's a one-point game early on. Maddox up and a little shot from the uh, short corner was no good. Grayville's looking to push. Traveling violation. It's going to be Gallatin basketball. Uh, Coach Brazier wants me to give a shout out to the uh, Super Lady Hawks. <laughs> Sorry, Bryce, I had to. You kept referencing my team, so I had to bring your team up. Uh, the Lady Hawks, Junior Lady Hawks, right now they're uh, they're 11 and 0. They've got a game tomorrow over at Galatia. Just like our high school boys, they'll be having a game tomorrow night at home. It'll be their first home game. Uh, they're playing against Carmi. So we've got um, some substitutes in right now. We've got Colin Monroe and Dylan Rushing in for Grant Jackson and Noah Richardson. Foul trouble early on seems to be hurting the Hawks. But, you know, I mean, this is – I don't know, you weren't here early on in the JV game, but the uh, JV game was kind of like this back and forth early. And hopefully it's the same way in this game. In the second half they pull away and, and get a win here. Greenville's looking to push. Number five looking to try to dunk. About screwed that up there. Looks like Grant uh, Jackson's getting ready to check back in. 17-16 here early on. Six minutes and 11 seconds left here in the second half. Scratch that. The uh, junior high Lady Hawks, they play on Wednesday. Uh, Coach Brazier just corrected me. Grayville with the ball. A little tip from behind. 
by Collin over to Dillon. Dillon with a little bit of a, probably a little aggressive foul there going after the ball. As a coach, you're not mad at that. You're not mad about that. because that was totally out of frustration. I know you can't do that, but you still, you still feel for him because it was frustrating. Up and good by number 24, Jake Hossman. He's just a sophomore. Big body kid, plays hard it looks like. That's the thing Gowton County's got to understand this year. Everybody knows they were regional champs last year. They're going to get their best shot every night. Grant up and no good. You're Lucas there, you got to look the box out. 19-16 early on. Uh, Grayville leads. Number five, Tajay is going to run the offense here for Grayville. Over to number three, Levens. Levens back to 22. Ian Kleinschmidt over to 15, over to 24. Jake Hossman. Jake Hossman looking from outside. Nope. Hossman cutting back door. Good stop by Lucas Jackson. Just better offense sometimes there. That was good defense by Lucas. Can't be was, mad about that. I thought that. it was great defense, so there's not much much else he could have done. No, he was in good position. Nothing wrong with that there. Grant's going to run the offense over to Wyatt. Wyatt looking to attack. There's a three by Maddox Sandifer. Assist to uh, Wyatt from 21-19. Grayville, 4-29 to go. Hit off of the what did that hit? <laughs> off of the uh, rafters here. The, uh, if you, I know you probably can see it. It's a really low gym here at Grayville. It's low and it's small. We're all packed in here. Only thing that would be worse is if we were down south in Polk County. <laughs> if you can't tell, I do not like going there. I don't think Miss Mitchell does either. Over the top to Noah, up and no good. Grayville looking to push again. To Tajay. Tajay, 23-19. 3.56 to play here in the first half. Got it poked away there. Nice dunk by uh, number five, Kaze. And Gowden County will take a full timeout on that. 25 19, 331 left here in the second quarter. I couldn't even hear what you said, Matt, during all of that because it was so loud in here. But um, I will say that was an impressive play. And that always gets the crowd fired up. When you can set something up like that, I mean, and then you automatically have to call a timeout. Um, it's unfortunate for the Hawks. It's just a, not the start they wanted. Uh, down six here, late in the second quarter. Pippen, do you have anything to add? Got to give a shout out to my buddy, uh, Jacob Dobson. He uh, just texted me and said he's watching the Hawks here. He's probably one of the biggest GEC supporters um, around the area. I uh, just want to say hi to you, Jacob. Glad to see you're watching. Coach Hatton shot me a text. He wasn't sure who I was talking about on Coach Brazier. I apologize on that, Coach Hatton. That's Coach Coy, as we call him. Um, all right, we're going to get back to the action here. Grant's got the basketball. A little, uh, I don't know, man to man here by Grayville. Wyatt with the basketball. They're sagging off on this man to man. I mean, they're daring Gallatin to shoot outside, which I don't blame him right now because we're not particularly hitting from outside. You want him to come out and tighten up a little bit and get him off the drive? 
you got to hit some shots from outside. I'm hoping that this is, like you said, they go into the locker room at halftime and something jolts inside of them. Because right now we need. Um, like I said, early game, jit early early game jitters. No, nobody hurt here. And you know, like I said, I mean, I talked to talked to Coach Everback and Coach McGuire. They played this team three times this summer, and you know, and they beat them every time. And it and it's probably very easy if you're Gatton County to overlook Grayville. I mean, because they. From what I understand, they they handle them pretty well in the uh, in the summertime. Tajay looking to go coast to coast, up and good. 27-19 with 2:24 left to play here in the first quarter. Like I said, tough place to play here at Grayville. Out of bounds, going to be by, by some basketball. Like I said, this would be a feather in the hat to Grayville because they know Gallatin won a regional last year, and they're sitting there thinking, man, if we can knock them off, what's that say for us? And they're playing well right now. Oh, yeah, they're, I mean, they are playing really well, and I think we've made a few mistakes, too. And I've made, I don't know how many turnovers we have, but it's been several. Um, I'm sure Coach Ederbeck will There's discuss a, all of this to happen. Oh, yeah. Like I said, but nobody hurt here. Down eight, still two minutes to play in the second half. You got the entire – in the first half, you got the entire second half. Like I said, you've got some different people out there. You know, you can tell they're they're missing Riley, they're missing Kieran. Got to get set up and get things going. Now Colin's going to handle the basketball. Over to Wyatt. Wyatt looking for should have made that pass into Colin Cutting. Good, my, Wyatt. Or Noah's got to go up strong there. Go out of control. They're not going to bail you out. A little pressure now from Gallatin. All right, they're going to back off. Nothing wrong with that. Got a foul on from number two. That is our third team foul. That is his second. Foul trouble early here. Minute 14 left, Grayville up 8, 27-19. Good, there you go, Wyatt. Good defense. Good hustle by Wyatt from there. And that's an adjustment that Wyatt's got to make right there. He was getting burned a little bit back door, and he's got to open up more to the ball and see that guy when he goes back door. He's got to cut that off. Good job by Wyatt Fromm. Gowden County basketball with one minute left here in the first half. 27-19. All the way, good pin by Wyatt Fromm for Colin driving the basket. 21-27, less than a minute to play. That was a good play there. We're trying to out jump people instead of boxing people out. They were talking about the exact same thing in the JV game. I've seen Coach McGuire and Coach Utterback talking about you can't, you not only you got to be in position, you have to move somebody. Grant with a nice move just didn't get it to fall. Six, five, got a push. Got four, three, two, one. Up and no good. After two quarters, 29-28 at half. Bison? Bison is in the lead, but Hawks is a little behind. The Hawks could probably do better the next half. I think they will, Kipton. Good job. Now
now we have a dance from the Grayville cheerleaders. And uh, folks, we'll be back here probably in the next seven or eight minutes.
All right, about a minute 49 left here before the second half gets underway. Actually, just talked to one of the guys doing stats for our boys, and um, as a team, we are six of 20 from the field, which for those of you at home that don't know what I'm talking about, we've taken uh, 20 shots and we've only made six. So percentage-wise for uh, Mr. Herman, show I'm paying attention in some math, that is uh, about 30% from the field as a team. We've got nine total turnovers, so you figure on turnovers if they scored on a little over half of those, let's just say they scored on six of them, that's a 12-point swing. You take 12 points off of Grayville's score right now, instead of it being 29-21, it's about 21-17. If we make half the shots we missed in the first half, um, you know, you missed 14 shots and uh, you've got um, – Another 14 points, it's 35-17. Just cleaning up little things here in the second half. Defensively, you gotta get up and get after it. You know, I, I agree, I'm talking to somebody during halftime, we need to look at cutting our teeth on the defensive end. We're long and lanky, you gotta use that length. Uh, it's gonna be our ball coming out here in the uh, second half. 16 minutes though, nothing wrong, eight, eight point game, just a three possession game here. Uh, the Lady Hawks are uh, playing right now or should be actually getting ready to start here in about the next 20 minutes up at the Hamilton County Tournament. So, uh, again, here we go. It'll be uh, Gowton County basketball to start. Jarrah, what's your thoughts going into the second half? Well, I think that um, maybe those jitters are worked out and these they can see that this is not just some game that's going to be handed over to them. They're going to have to work their tails off to come back from an eight-point deficit now. So hopefully Coach Utterback and Coach McGuire got them fired up in the locker room to come out and do a little better and uh, handling the ball and keeping the ball. As I say that, there's a turnover. Like I said, I was talking to Coach McGuire during the game and uh, there's two more points for Grayville. Uh, Coach McGuire said they had nine turnovers in the first half. So now it's 31-21, Grayville, seven and a half to play. Not the start we wanted in the second half. Now we're down 10 points. Um, Good move by Grant Jackson there to go to the basket, get knock some free throws down. Pretty sure I counted us missing four or five free throws in the first half. At the line for Gallatin is Grant Jackson. First one, in and out, no good. Starters look like they're to be back on the floor for both Gallatin and Grayville. Second one's up and good. Twenty-two, thirty-one. Hawks trail by nine. I see that's what we want. We want them to settle for those outside shots. If you're Gallatin, we'll give up the uh, shots that are only about thirty percent. Grant looking to drive up and good. I think that's something that him and Maddox and Wyatt all need to do, attack more. Attack the inside. That foul's gonna be on Wyatt Fromm. I believe that will be his third foul. Six and a half to play. Collins gonna come in for uh, Gowton County. Coming in for Wyatt. Smart move there, you don't want him picking up a fourth foul. You gotta have Wyatt. Not hurt here, you're only down seven. Need to get a stop now, like that right there, that'd be a good way to go. That's what you wanna see if you're uh, coach at the back. Get the boy, they gotta be more aggressive on the defensive end. Go after some steals. There you go, good job, Noah. Good. Over to Maddox. 
So we got to see a little bit more pressure in the half court. Set something up, Grant. There you go. Roll the basket, roll the basket. Lucas for three, no good, no one got it. On the floor, that's good. Keep attacking. Foul is on number 30. Uh, that was Kanan Worley, that's his third personal foul there. Coming in for number 30, number 22, Ian Kleinschmidt. Maddox with the basketball over to Grant. Right now, if you're Grant, you got to look to attack. Just like that. Oh, good follow there by Lucas. Keep doing that, it'll fall. It's what you want. Keep attacking the basket. Keep rebounding if you're Lucas and if you're Noah. There you go, Maddox. Get up, get up, get up. Stop ball. He might have got stripped, but. Honestly, that was a good foul. He was likely going to make that shot if he didn't strip him. I don't even know that it was a foul, but they called a foul. Well, here's the thing. The reason they call that foul is he's swiping down. Not that I totally agree with the foul, but they're going to call it whenever you swipe down. And I have two shots from Grayville. Number five ties A. First one's up and no good. <laughs> Second shot here. Good. Scores 32 to 24. Eight point deficit here. Five minutes and 12 seconds left to play. Grant with the basketball. Just a handoff, make good passes. It's like Dylan Rushing's getting ready to check in. If I had to guess, I'm gonna say he's coming in for Maddox. It's another turnover by Maddox. Other than number five, I'm going to pressure the crap out of everybody on Grayville's team. Other than five, you're going to stay between five and the basket. That's all you want to do there. You got to box out if you're Lucas. Ended up getting the turnover thanks to Colin Monroe there. He, he smacked it out. After it and came out with the ball. Three by I hope the Hawks win. We all do. Four minutes in here. Nothing's really moved, still an eight point game. That's the one kid you probably don't want shooting at. But take care of it, take care of it, take care of it. Good hustle by Lucas Jackson. A great hustle and just, uh, I didn't know who was gonna come out with that ball, but Lucas stuck with it and was able to give it to another hot player. Good move by Noah Richardson. I think that's that's what we need more of. Yes. That's what we need more of out of Noah. My goodness, I mean, we're bigger than everybody here as far as our boys. Stay between him and the basket, Noah. Good defense by Dylan there. Stay on your feet. I swear if you're Lucas, you gotta stay on your feet there. Sure, you can hear uh, Coach Utterback and Coach McGuire saying the same thing. Stay on your feet. Nice little floater by Grant. The two. 
asking to step inside the three point line. Look to push. Down six here, two and a half to play in the third quarter. Nobody hurt, nobody hurt, you're fine. Well, a great ball player does seem to be hurt, actually, so. Oh, I didn't notice I that. I didn't notice that until he was hunkered over, so I'm not sure what happened. I missed all of that. Well, since Miss Mitchell won't do it, I'll give a shout-out to her right hand and basically the person who runs most of the high school is uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Caitlin Hatton. Uh, she takes care of all of us, um, myself included. She Between does a great job taking care of all of us, that's right. Looks like Gowton County is going to try and isolate uh, Lucas on the inside or Noah one. I'm not sure who. Nope, now we're going to maybe run a little pick and roll here. Double screen up top for the three for Grant. No good. Rebound by Grayville. There you go. Up and good by Noah Richardson. Just like that, down to four. A silly foul. It's not a question of how. You've got to know better than that. You're a senior, Noah Richardson. Get in front of him, between him and the basket. Play good defense there. Don't foul somebody 40 feet from the basket. Minute 40 left here in the third. Push all the way, Noah. Great job. There you go, up and good. Here comes Galton County, down two with a minute 13 to play. Timeout, Grayville. As you can hear the crowd getting excited for Galton County. thing to do in basketball is not to get down on yourself and let it affect the next play. It's kind of like in golf. I can relate it to golf. You get mad at one shot, you're mad if you're mad the rest of the holes, then you're, you're not doing yourself any favors. And it looked like he redeemed himself very well just then. That's the thing as coaches we tell our kids, I mean you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. Right. Nobody's played perfect nobody's ever played perfect. But you know Noah Noah's a senior this year. He don't have the excuse of well I'm a junior I'm not a leader. Him and Wyatt and these other seniors that are out on the floor, they've got to be leaders. And I mean, they've got to step up. And that's what you got to have Noah do right there. You know, again, Grayville's a tough place to play. You're down two with, a, with nine, over nine minutes left in the entirety of the game. So you just want to get back in and get back in the game, get it to manageable. I mean, if you can get it tied here going into the fourth grade, if we can get a lead, even better. But I, between me and you, I mean, defense is what's changed the game. They've locked down a little bit on defense, and they're getting up, and they're, they're getting after it. We have one minute and 11 seconds. Looks like they're going to maybe leave Noah and Wyatt out for these this last minute, possibly. What do you think, Matt? Not to pick up anymore. No, time. no, I totally agree. You just want to play good, solid defense here. Put your best defender on uh, five. Don't let five catch it. There you go. That's exactly what you want. Nothing silly. Get it to there. You go. Get it to Maddox. Over to Colin. Okay, we just slow this game down and try oh, yeah. to get ourselves in the fourth quarter. No, oh, you're you're in great position. You've outscored them. I mean, if it stays where it's at right now, I mean, you've outscored them uh, six points in this quarter. You know, nobody hurt here. Thirty seconds to go. Thirty-four, thirty-two. You're right where you want to be. Handle the basketball. You're taking the last shot. It's me. I don't think this kid on on. Uh... Oh, we got a five-second 
second little yeah. thing. Closely guarded there. That's where Grant's got to know what's going on. He's got to pay attention. That's unfortunate, too, because, you know, that, that gives them now the last chance to score yeah. in this quarter. 17 seconds left. Don't let him have it. Not five. Anybody but five shoots a shot. There you go. Good, Dylan. Good. Good by Maddox. Close. Good. All right, that was great defense. That was great defense. It looks like Noah and White are going to check back in the game for the fourth quarter. We're only down two points now, Matt. That was well, a heck of a quarter by the half. Here's the thing. I mean, it was 29 to 21 at the end of the first or at the end of, end of halftime. That quarter they scored, they gave up, Gowton County gave up five points. It, 29 to 21, it's 34-32. So you just outscored them 11 to five. Defense is what's gonna win them games. They're Hopefully doing we'll a good take job. That, that momentum and I think Noah is, is kind of starting to feel energized and, and feel better. So it is hard to play in this gym though. I will say, even when you walk in, it's just, you know, when you're used to a, a gym like Gowton County's and then you walk in this gym that kind of resembles a lot of junior high gyms. It's just a lot of different feeling and getting used to, and hopefully the fourth quarter they can settle in and take care of this game. Well, as as uh, Coach McGuire said to me earlier today, we don't care if we win every game by two. If we win every game, that's all that matters. They don't care how they win or how much they win by. It's just the important thing is getting that win on, on the first game of the season. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and the other thing is, I mean, it's an hour drive up here. That's a long bus ride. It's raining. It's getting cold. I mean, but, again, I mean, I Coach, uh, actually, funny enough, Coach uh, Denny Anderton, uh, who coached a lot of these boys in junior high. Um, I know Noah and them's eighth grade year and uh, Grant's uh, seventh grade year. He just coached, He just texted me and said a lot better team defense by the Hawks. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to cut their teeth on the defensive side of the basketball. And it's going to be Grayville basketball to start the fourth quarter. Get it, string a couple stops here together and score and get the lead and let's get out of here. Don't reach if you're Noah. Where you got to box out. Good defense by Maddox, just better offense by Taze. Gotta go up strong there. Don't worry about contact if you're Noah. And we're gonna have a tie-up jump ball. It's going to be Gowton County basketball. I will say I can see that it's getting a little intense in here, and the fans are the Bison fans are kind of uh, up on their feet on some of these plays. That it's just getting more physical as they grow tired and they get a little more anxious as the game gets closer to being over. He may have walked right there, but good job by Lucas. Six forty-three left to play. Thirty-six, thirty-two. Grayville basketball. That's going to be out of bounds. Whoa! I don't know that you can do that. Is that not a traveling violation? Miss Mitchell even got a little excited there. That's a foul. Oh, I said over the back. The crowd yelled over the back. That'll be a push, though, if you watch him. It is not over the back. That's what he said. He didn't say anything. Push. He signaled for over the push. back. Push. <laughs> if I could turn the camera around, I'd show you. 36 32, six and a half to play. Good job there. So it is the fourth quarter with six minutes and 15 seconds. And they just called a charge on Grant Jackson. If I 
could boo, I would, but I guess I'll um, hold it down over here. Um, they called Grant Jackson for a charging foul. And I did not hear how many that was on him, did you? That's his second personal foul, so he's fine. Good defense by Lucas. Good, but you've got to box out. Great defense. Didn't box out there late in the game. They call that on Lucas or they call that on Grant? I believe they called that on Grant. If it is, that's his third. He's going to the line for Grayville. Number 24. I think we found out who we want to foul late in the game if we have to. Number 24, Jake Hossman. He's just a sophomore. Kids played really well tonight. He has actually played very well. I agree. Hey, Mr. Moe, to give this a chance. Still a lot of time left. Plenty of time. Six minutes down four. That's a good play, and I think that Grant was ready, but then it kind of uh, flipped around in his hands. But he still ended up getting the foul, which is great because he gets two shots. One of the line shooting two for Gowton County is number 23, Grant. First one's up and good. Both of them good there. Back to a two-point game. Now we just need to get a stop on this end, Jarrah. We really do. It's, I mean, I know we still have five minutes, but every possession now, it is critical that we get good. Good stop. There's that, there it is. Good job. Good job by. Oh, well, it looks like Grant got popped right in the nose. Colin with the basketball. Isaiah with a two-point shot. That was the biggest cluster of uh, things that, that transpired there. It honestly looked like, first of all, it looked like maybe Hawks were fouled down there on that end. Then they steal the ball back from us. I don't know. It was just kind of a, a mess of events. So. Well, on the other end, it looked like whenever we tipped the rebound away, we popped it off of Grant's face. Grant took it right to, right, right to the bottom lip. There's three for Grant, up and good rebound by Lucas. That's gonna be a foul. It's fourth per personal foul. Checking in for the Bison, number 22. Uh, so in this quarter too, Matt, something that's important is uh, Grayville has three foul, team fouls, so two more and we will get to shoot two free throws on every yeah. uh, foul. Before I forget, I'm going to give another shout out to our sponsors tonight. Urban Cable Construction Company, Legions Bank, Jeremy and Amy Knott, along with Steve and Candy Drone, Mike Gross and Sons Heating and Air, uh, Charlton's Auto Body, Banterra Bank and Ridgeway, John and Kathy Seeley, New Hope Church, uh, Ellison Concrete Construction, LLC. Looks like tipped it out of bounds again. 38-34, 440 to play here in the fourth quarter. Don't know that I agree with that. I couldn't tell the bars are in the way for me here. I thought that was uh, Gowton County bas basketball. 30-second timeout by Grayville. Four minutes, 38 seconds left to play here in the fourth quarter. It's 
going to be Grayville basketball. Oh my, we're, we're kicking it off. Wow. Okay. Well, I've seen that a few times. Well, I don't even know if I turned the camera fast enough because apparently we were not ready for the action and neither were the Hawks because. Uh, we didn't even get down on defense in time for Un to make that shot. Unfortunately, um, I've had that happen because I'm kind of like Coach McGuire and Coach Edderback. I like to talk during my timeouts, and I want all 30 seconds of it. Once that second bell rings, uh, they have every right to hand that ball over. There's been times where it's been our ball, and uh, they've set it down and started the count on us. Four minutes, 34 seconds to go, and it's a seven-point game. Possession was critical. He's wide open. Uh, up and good by Lucas Jackson. Got to get a stop. Got to get a stop. Five-point game. He might have walked there. It kind of looked like it. Got to have that if you're Noah. Anybody but him catches the ball. Anybody but Tyze catches the ball. You've got to make these other guys beat you, not him. Big screen. Roll. 43-36. Good attack. Oh, well, Should have went on there. Should have just calling. kept on going. He had him beat. There's Great three. For three. No good. It's not a bad shot there. But I would rather see him attack off of that. Three and a half to go. They're in. I mean. Honestly, well, Colin was wide open. He would have just kept going. Well, here's the thing, if you attack here and they foul, that's foul number five and you get two free throws. Who cares if you make or miss it? That's what I'm saying right there. You gotta make these other guys beat you. Anybody but Tyze, number five. Up and no good. Now you gotta get up and guard. Three minutes left, seven point ball game. Still plenty of time left here, but you've gotta get up and guard. And I, I think hear you're right, though. Uh, I think we're going to have to start attacking and maybe trying to at least draw a couple fouls to get some free throws in. And See, instead, we foul. Right there, prime example. If you're going to call that on that end, that's why I'm saying attack on this end. Make them call it on the offensive end. Not mad at calling there. They got to. We want them to be up and be aggressive. Coach Utterback's going to take a timeout here. Got a full timeout with 2:58 to play. Those are our right. fantastic cheerleaders again. All right, Matt. So, if this is you in this position, what do you think? Uh, what's the game plan for the last two minutes and 58 seconds? I mean, uh, you're you're probably telling your you're probably telling the boys right now, you got to get up and pressure. I don't care about if they call a foul or not. You got to get up and pressure. So. Because here's the thing, my honest opinion, uh, other than probably five and uh, maybe number number three or 30, the rest of these guys, you got to make them earn it at the free throw line. Get up, pressure them. You're going after the ball. Um, defense is what's going to give you a chance here. But, again, anyone but number five for Grayville, I mean, I know I've said that a hundred times, but night. he's killed us tonight. He has. I don't even know how many points he has to have, but it, it's a lot. I know that. Can't let him have it. That's not a bad foul. That's not a bad foul. It's not a bad foul, but I think it might be his fourth foul. Hold on, Noah. Nope, you're right, it's his fourth. Well, of course, I said don't foul five or three, and we foul three, so maybe I'll maybe I'll jinx him here. And I don't think he's missed a free throw all night. There we go, I love when you say that. Yes, there we go. There we go. That seems to work on NBA games, so I figured I'd give it a shot here. Well, he hasn't missed a free throw all night, folks, and boom, <laughs> clank, there it goes. I guess that is the weird thing about this five-foul five rule. Second one is up and good. 
Really hurt there. You only gave up one. You're down eight. But now you got to look to push. I got to run. Wow. Now we've got a uh, offensive foul. Okay, I didn't like that. Did you like that? <laughs> Man, I, I, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot call. I'm, I'm shocked that Coach Ederbacks is calm as he is. I know. Now you got to get down oh, and guard. Is that on green? I missed. That's his fourth, I think. Because I didn't hear on that last one that should have been Lucas's. They may have gave it to Grant. So does that foul not count when it's a player control foul like that? No. Okay. On the offensive end, it, it doesn't matter. Right there's another one. Are you going to call it or not? Wow. Wow. First one's up and good. I have to agree with Coach Hederback. No way that was not a charge. If, after what you call for Grant, it, I mean, same thing for Colin. Gotta look to attack. No, gotta look to attack. Don't reach there, slide your feet. It's okay though, I mean, we needed to probably foul at some point anyway, and uh, now we're gonna give him two more free throws to their best shooter. Yeah, I was about to say, anybody but him. He hasn't missed one all night, Matt. I wanna see you jinx him. <laughs> He's pretty good from the free throw line, I'd say. Told you. Uh, Like I said, from my vantage point on that last charge call. Hey, missed that one. There you go. There we go. Good call Down there, ahead. Miss Mitchell. Got to go. Two minutes. Down 11. Got to get back. Got to stop ball. Got to stop ball. Might have been a foul or two there on Grant. That wasn't a foul right there. I don't understand that. A minute and a half left. There's two more and the foul. See, and that's the other thing. Now that with this quarter thing that it shows, you know, foul count, the highest it goes is five. So the worst the foul count could be is five to one or five zero. Well, that don't look too deceiving. I'm going to tell you right now, the foul count's more about, it's about nine to four right now. Not complaining. We, we, did a, we made a lot of mistakes oh ourselves. Don't know that you want that there. Yeah, I will say, I mean, we... This isn't because we're getting fouls called. No. However, the foul, foul calls haven't been um, that great. Um, but I will say that we have made our own mistakes. Plenty of our own mistakes. Oh, yeah. In this game. That's the thing. Here's, here's, the, here's the great thing. They don't hand out. They don't hand out trophies and regionals and things like that early on. And you know, um, not to bring up a sore spot for you, but <laughs> he's shaking his head. Um, you know, Matt, Matt's uh, junior high team lost a 
heartbreaker in the first game of the season, and now they haven't lost a game since. So, you know, we hope that. I hope you're not trying to jinx us. We do have a game tomorrow night. Sorry. Well, I hope that this is kind of uh, humbling to our kids, and maybe they'll work hard, come back stronger tomorrow night. It's tough to see because I know they, they've been so excited, but maybe um, they can have a good showing tomorrow at home against Carmine. Thirty seconds left here. Fifty-four, twenty-six looks like looks to be the final. The game. You know, we just didn't have it tonight. A lot of things didn't go our way. Couldn't get shots to fall. We made some silly mistakes that I'm sure that Coach Utterback and uh, Coach McGuire will talk about. You know, many years ago, uh, Coach Herman, Coach Miller. You know, they uh, they had games where, I mean, they had teams that won regionals. We went down to Pope County of all places. We played terrible, you know, and it just didn't go our way tonight, and that's part of it. Like I said, it's game one of 31. I think, you know. it'll be, uh, I think it'll be good to see how they come back from this tomorrow night, what adjustments they make, what how they are mentally even tomorrow, because this is tough. It's tough to lose, come down to a team that you've beat multiple times and then lose. So I hope to see some mental toughness out of them and see them come back tomorrow just ready to rock and roll just like they were today and take on the Bulldogs and hopefully get their minds back on track for a great season. I hope to see everybody there tomorrow night for the uh, game. Uh, I believe uh, Coach Brazier, Bryce Brazier, will be at the uh, call on the Hawks Network tomorrow night. JV game will start at about 6 o'clock, followed by the varsity game after that. That will be down at our place at Gowton County Gymnasium. And Kipton to uh, send us off. Bush and win, yay! But I'm I'm sorry, Hawks, but you you lost by a little bit. We'll get him next time. <laughs>